Top tech experts and executives are issuing a new warning about the potential dangers of artificial intelligence. Hundreds of executives, researchers, and engineers from top AI companies are saying in a statement, quote, mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority alongside other societal scale risks such as pandemics and nuclear war. ABC News contributor and Google Tech Policy fellow Mike Muse joins me now for more on this. Mike, risk of extinction? Walk us through this. I think the risk of extinction is a little bit extreme when it comes to that. But I think what these individuals are trying to say is that we definitely need more regulations in place in order to ensure uh, that AI will always be used for good and that there are guardrails in place. A lot of the individuals who signed on to this statement are from majority companies, companies who have been around for a long period of time and those type of companies who have AI principles, including ChatGPT. But what they're really concerned about is for those organizations who don't have guardrails, who don't have board directors, directors to adhere to, who may be startups or may be lone risk, you know, wolves out there who are able to design their own AI mm. that could be used for bad. Now, the Center for AI Safety is warning of some worst case scenarios, things like using AI to build chemical weapons or to generate disinformation that destabilizes society. Uh, critics say that AR's, AI is far too underdeveloped for that. But that to me sounds like a temporary reassurance, right? Does that mean that it's only a matter of time before that does become a real risk? I think all, everything you just laid out, all those things are possible. But what I love about them kind of raising the flag here is that they really want to make sure government that works at a very slow pace, recognizing that innovation is happening so fast. So the era of legislation, governance, governing and putting policies in place or, either, or even standing up at federal agencies needs to happen now and swiftly to ensure that those things do not cause harm. On the flip side, Diane, I will look at it from another perspective, where you could use AI for good to detect certain chemicals that are being produced in certain areas and regions by way of detecting that. So it could be a warning sign that, hey, this country and or this cell in this country is really creating the possibility potential to have a weapon of mass destruction. So be mindful of it. You also look at, sorry. Yeah. So you could use AI to try to defend against the dangers of AI. Exactly. It's always a give and a take. There's always pros and cons. So just as equal part AI could be used for bad, an equal part in that example, it could be used for detection, for nuclear warfare. You know, is there a nuclear head that is getting warmed up in a particular region or area? Is this centrifuge happening right now? Is there more action? Is this area in the region, is the soil and the temperature getting more warm? That means that can detect something is happening, right? Looking at gun ballistics and lead, you know, is there more regions in that area where you see quantities of that? And so AI can be used for detection, even for pandemics, to be able to recognize ahead of time disease, famine, even in earlier detection of hurricanes, in order to figure out where should we best uh, allocate resources to be uh, on the front end versus waiting a couple of days later when it takes difficult resources to go through all the devastation and destruction that prohibits supplies and resources to get into those areas. It could have already been there because of the predictive modeling. Fascinating. Now, G7 leaders recently created a working group on AI to kind of consider regulations, things that you are, and some of what you're talking about. So if the government does move to try to increase regulations in this area, what do you think that would look like? And what do they have to keep in mind here? I'm really glad that the G7 is part of this conversation now, because for far too long, well, far too long, for the last couple of months, <laughs> it's always been about the U.S. government, where we have to recognize that we are in this globally mm. as a global society. So it's really great that the other countries are getting involved. It's no different, Diane, than, for example, the Paris Accord, uh, to really get all nations and countries to really rally around climate change, to be effective as one as one global uh, world and community, the same thing needs to happen on when it comes to AI and technology to make sure that we are all on one accord as a global society to make sure the guardrails are in place so that we don't see such bad actors. Just as Europe has much more stringent policies relating to data privacy, the United States government does. So at some points, there are other countries who are ahead of us in certain areas where we lag behind, and there's other areas where we take the lead and we pull other countries along. That's why that G7 summit about them coming together is highly important. All right, something we'll be watching closely. Mike News, thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.